I'm doing it. We're going in. We're live, Kim. Woo <laughs> It's laughing. We're finally together, Dana. I know. Okay. Oh, we have so much to talk about. I'm going to just jump right in. Okay. I want you to. I want you to. So Kim D and I had been brought together by David Yonta from Behind the Velvet Rope. We did a, a podcast together on my show, Dishing Drama, Dana, and I think he also aired it on his Patreon. And I had wanted to do another collab with Kim D. So I reached out and to David because I was trying to be respectful. He seemed to be a sort of gatekeeper to Kim D, like the bouncer of Kim D's world. <laughs> okay. I can't. And my understanding was that, you know, that was the right approach. So I reached out to David about collaborating with Kim D and I tried to include David because I didn't want him to feel like I was trying to push him out of the mm -hmm. relationship. And he said, he was best friends with you, that you guys did everything together, that you would do anything in the world for him. And that, you know, uh, Kim is, you know, he was saying to me the bestest of the bestest. So initially I thought the relationship between you and David was that you were going on the show free as friends. But then over time, when it became a regular thing and he was naming the show after you on Saturday and all this stuff, I assumed that you had elevated your relationship to be a transactional one, right? Mm -hmm. Where you were getting paid mm -hmm. to right. do these gigs. Anyway, I just want to put that as a sidebar. Okay. What happened though, is I said to David, listen, I texted Kim D directly and she said she wants to do a collab. So after I spoke to David, he was like, let me check with her. And then I reached out to you and you were like, yes, I want to do it. I do want to do it because we were all kind of supporting each other. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> yes. And so then what happened was David um, suddenly like three days or four days before we're supposed to do the show is like Kim D is not doing it. She won't do it. I'll go on with you, but Kim D won't. And I thought that was really awful mm -hmm. because I had, counted on it. You know how that is. I know, yep. you know. And so I was really hurt. And then I started to notice that on the show, he dragged me from time to time indirectly, which was like, I didn't like, and I didn't understand because I got hurt, you know, and I didn't drag him. I just said the whole story, like I am doing now. Right. And, you know, he continued to kind of indirectly drag me and I got upset about that. So anyway, it escalates, you know, he starts to attack my guest I have on the show. I end up having Louis Ruel as his ex-employer, David Brill on the show, just to tell his side of the story. Look, I have positive people come on my show for Teresa and Louis right. I had her best buddy, Nicole Pepys. Right. She came in and she told a great story about them. And I've had... A, a negative story about right. that's Louis the way Rowell. it's supposed to be right and that was david brill and that's his truth i mean fair enough right okay so david attacked the guest and i was like what is he doing right and then <laughs> and i want to say this i can't I, wait to speak i want you to piece. know that i piled I'm having patience here Go ahead. i piled you in the box with david of course so I basically was like, I felt like David came in between us and put a block that we couldn't communicate anymore after you and I had that great right. conversation. Right. And then he tried to position it that you were sort of the bad guy, all about money, doesn't want to help, isn't about anything. Unbelievable. And then made me believe that in the process of him dragging me, you were like on board, which yeah. I don't, I actually later said to my patrons, I'm starting to think that 
Kim is just being dragged in because I see David telling her gossip that isn't true. And I know it isn't true. And he's having her comment on it, right. which means she's losing credibility in the gossip landscape because it's not true what he's talking about. There were so many it. things about people being fired and all that. And I was getting really upset because I knew it wasn't true. And like, and I was saying, no, they're not. They're all coming back. And I was getting upset. So let me pause this for a minute. Okay. <clears throat> when... When I was told, when David came back to me, oh, I said his name, Kumasikam. I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to, that was a slip. That's a book. Kumasikam, that's what he is to me. That's what the name of the show is. Kumasikam is Italian. Is What's his name? What's his name? So when, when this came back to me from him about you, I had just about had it with pay situations and watching this show and watching that show and more and more shit being thrown at me. So I said, listen, I'll do it. I said, I want some kind of a pay. I mean, I'm taking more and more time. And he said, she said, absolutely not. She's not paying you. And you know, what happened was David at that point probably should have said, you need to call Kim. Of course. And tell her because I was, I was going like at that point. I I'm said, Listen to me. I was doing the show for a cleaning lady. You think I wouldn't have made a deal? I mean, you have to understand. Yes. It was just in the beginning. You, yeah. Would you come on? Would you come on? Yeah. Would you come on? And of course I'm his friend. Yeah. I cared about Dave, but then all of a sudden I see the lifestyle changing and, and the things going on. And I don't know anything about Patreon. I don't know anything yeah. about YouTube. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. Okay. Yeah. I don't care to now, No, And I know that's how he got you into this. Yes. By not doing yes. the test. Yeah. No idea. No right. idea. So finally I said, listen, what the heck? I mean, you want me to do all these things. So it started out even less. Than oh, clean I, I know something I have to tell you. This, you just triggered it. I have to tell you this. So I thought you were making money off the Patreon. So I didn't understand why David wanted me to pay you too okay. when he's airing it on the Patreon for him. And then on my, I had no idea. my Patreon. So no. I'm like, and, and then I'm like, but wait a minute, we share gossip and we go on each other's shows and promote each other's patrons. So why wouldn't she want to do it? It makes no right. sense. There's well, a now, now it's going to make sense. sense. <clears throat> my allergies are bad. I just put my allergies back. <clears throat> so it was less. When I first started, it was less. The offer was less than a cleaner lady. Okay. <laughs> so then I swear to God on my seven <laughs> I swear lady. to God. I swear to God, um, I have proof. Everything was paid through PayPal. I have proof, okay? So long story short, finally, more and more demands were being put on me. And then there was some slander. Like when I say slander, like, oh, make sure you earn your keep. Uh, you better get up tomorrow morning early and we better do it this way or you're going to be fired. And I'm like, first of all, people from the street don't freaking talk to me like that. Okay. I got freaking murderers. You know what I mean? That used to get out of jail. You've been through I, I, I it. You've been through, I've been through it. it. <clears throat> They're out of jail now that like for the mob that talked to me with respect. And now I'm being told like, whoa. So once again, it was a gig. Got up in the morning. Every time it was earlier, I barely drank my coffee, all that. So I, what I was told, what I was told, about the second raise, which was $20. It was a $20 raise that I was not to be asked again for a year because that's the corporate way that there is no talk about, right? So I'm like, all right. You know, I mean, I don't know what he's meant. I had no idea. Uh, okay. I had no idea. I'm like, all right, whatever. Hey, Lila, don't start with me. So whatever. So now Lila, I'm like, shut up. Lila, come over here, buddy. So long story short, I'm like, all right. So now I get two friends, two friends that, hold on. This happens, guys, they know my dogs, this happens. Don't worry, my dog has dementia, so she might do something weird in a minute. Yeah, okay. Um, they like the dog, so it's okay. And we'll go longer for them. Anyway, so long story short, my two friends start coming to me and they're like, ton of money off of you. Could hold you... on, you're freezing, Kim. Okay, hold on. You froze, baby. Fuck. <laughs> oh, fun goal. Am I still frozen? Yeah, you're still frozen. You want to go back to your spot where your dog is? 
I was here. No, I'm here. It was hard. Uh oh, you froze. Hold on. Let's see. I don't know here. You want yeah, me to start one? I don't know. Oh, there you go. You're back. You're back. I'm now, good. Okay, I'm not yes, moving. I mean, you're moving. a little. You're dragging a little, but maybe your phone just needs to like reconfigure. Yeah, regroup. Yeah. So anyway, so that would okay. So now two of my friends are coming to me and they're saying, "This is not cool. I don't like the way he's talking to you. Um, he's making a lot of money off of you." And I'm like, like, and then I see the lifestyle and I'm like. Maybe he is. I don't know. And I'm still at this point a friend. But then I heard about the C word on another show. Oh, about and, no, I know what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't even want. Yeah, I don't. That was. And then I said, don't do that on my show. Don't do that when you're with me. I don't go for that stuff. And then one day, I don't remember what was said. This was all escalating. What was done? I think it was about Andy Cohen. And I said, listen to me. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. And then I got a phone call from my friend, Jen, which that's going to be on my Patreon. My friend, Jen, who helped him to get into the Jill Zarin thing. And she was totally upset about how he treated her after she got him in. And then that was the last straw. And I sent a text, which will be up on my Patreon, showing I'm feeling uh, undervalued, not valued, and disrespected. That is the only reason I walked away had nothing to do with the show, had nothing to do with thinking I'm coming back, had nothing to do with Teresa, had no nothing. Then, and I said, let we could still stay friends. Then the name calling, then the name calling, which I go over it on my Patreon. I have it all written down, which I'm sure you have other things too that we can go over. The first episode will list every single name that people sent me in his writing, filthy, names about with a person who has been a close good friend to him you know i was in shock that it went that way i was in shock so i and this my my other plans of having my own podcast was not in the plan but i'm like when i found out what i was bringing in and the seventy two thousand hits on on youtube 54,000, 34,000, 72,000 i'm like you got I no idea i still don't know how to look it up so people are sending me all this stuff and I'm like, oh my God. Now I'm getting sick to my stomach saying, I can't believe how I was like, I'm, I'm sick. Like I got physically sick over that. I was like sick that I allowed this, sick that I was used. At, like I thought I was his friend. So long story short, I called up a friend of mine. I said, can you please help me with my book? Because the girl that's helped me write got very sick. So now I have a new author, a new publisher, a new PR. I told the people that own the studio, can you please look up my numbers? I don't know how. Well, they called me back and they're like, we're blown away. We want you to come in. We'll partner up with you. I don't have the money to do this, Dana. I don't. I know. All right? I'm a single person. My parents are both gone. I mean, I have seven dogs I take care of. I don't have it. So they made a deal with me. But you work so hard. You should get paid for it. I Thank mean, you. you said it when we he knew this, he knew this. When we talked about this. it, I said to you, remember we, you, you and I, do you want to tell the story of how we reached out? Yes. But you know, he knew this. He knew, knew I struggle. He knows. Okay. Why would I ask him to pay my cleaning lady? If I had so much money and it doesn't matter, can you like, <laughs> do you, I mean, are you freaking kidding me? So I was sick to my stomach. Okay. So we'll leave it at that. Now, I, as soon as this happened, I kind of, again, I have the gut feeling and I'm like, I'm going to text Dana because yeah. someone sent something from, you know, from you and you had mentioned something about me as I'm going to text her. And then when I found out that you thought you couldn't call me. Yeah. And that broke my heart. It yeah. really, really, it broke well, my and heart. And I actually like, said it. I said it on my bonus audio. I said, you guys, I have always believed that David manipulated this situation and wedged us apart because he saw her as like a payday in a sense and as a co-host. And that if I like started to connect with you, maybe he would feel like his, it would take away from the money. But again, I thought I, well, I don't believe that. 
I love to collaborate. I will continue to collaborate with you. I did the um the other girls, um, Roxanne and um Chantel. What I did all these people. Or, is that her name? Roxanne or Raquel? I, I get so I don't confused. know them, but, but I'm yeah, sure all about the real truth or whatever. They're, oh, like, they were lovely. Yeah, to I don't me. know those girls. They but... were lovely to me. Okay. So like, because I had to tell my story, the slander was coming Wait, in does left a and fight right. Did happen between you and them or David and them or something? David and them. Yes. Not me. What but like, I but you, did you get you. lumped into it again? Yes. So yes. you keep getting lumped into everything that David did. Everything. Everything. initiates yes so like, i want like like i mean like let me show you this really quick yeah. so this is where david was kind of you know i felt manipulative then m manipulative then i felt like he was being mean uh passive aggressive and then he goes for the jugular and he does he posts this See that? You should look into Dana Wilkie next. She's got skeletons. Right. And you see what I wrote? Yes, I do. And I did five shows about them. Have fun and screw you, David. That's what I put That's on my a shirt. shame. That's a shame. That's a shame. Oh, but it I really mean, is. Who, like, first of all, I I never said inspi be inspired to be me. Aspire to be me. Don't. Don't. I say, I my say, my life is, you know, yeah, it I is say what it is. to be me. That's one of my things because of what I've been through and what I came out of. You know, I that's one of my gigs. I'm going to be given advice. You know, I'm they want me to be a life coach at all these divorce um, uh, lawyers. And I'm like, no, I'm not ready for that yet. You know, sitting down in a seat, listening to people's issues at 250 an hour. I'd rather do this and they're going to, they can get free advice if they join my Patreon. But, um, you know, I'm really. Like I'm, I had a sick stomach for a while, guys. I mean, I had the, you know, the pains going up myself and th th that doesn't happen to me, but this all really threw me for a loop and made me sick because, you know, I trusted, I trusted and I'm well, too and trusting. Saying things like this on, um, you know, and whether you like Melissa Gorga or not, you know, don't say that. No, I, I said, don't say that on when you're on with me. I said that. So that was the beginning of the, uh, you know what I mean? I, he, the disrespect. And then other people were telling me that when he was doing his other podcasts without me, he was kind of trying to knock me. So, you know, trying to like, you know, I don't really listen to, I'm, um, I'm going somewhere else when she's talking and all that. Oh, really? You know? So they were telling me all this. I'm like, oh, that's nice. You know, to talk like that about no, me. No, he did that to me. Oh my yeah. God. I'm going to tell you this story. Yeah. So a bunch of the fans, when I did lives with David would say, you put so much effort in. You research, you're, you're validating, you're gossip, you're not just spooing stuff, right? And David checks out. Yeah. And and I actually, you know, David um, did a show with me. And to thank him, I gave him the tips, which we never even pre-agreed. So we didn't agree this. I just said to David, David, you know, we got some tips. Do you want some of the tips? And he said, that'd be great. So I sent him before I even knew if they were going to hit my account. Right. I sent them to him as a thank you. Right. And then I also had a wine sponsor and I had them send him the wine. So I don't understand. I'm so confused by this. I'm confused too. And um, that's not, that's not the person I met. That's not who I met five years ago, standing online at the share concert. That's not the person that I met standing online we both were standing online to do the book signing for the pretty mess that's not the person i met it's not this is not the person i met i am really disappointed and i'm really upset over it and like i said i'm a tough girl but this whole thing really made me sick i mean i've been popping pepsi and anti-nauseas and you know my son never sees me upset but he's upset He's like, this is terrible, but, 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 you know, he did to you and my friends are really upset and they're like, we saw this coming. We knew it. We saw the change, but you just kept allowing it. And, you know, we were, they were upset for me. And, you know, well, I think you probably hoped that at some point David would make it easy on you and say to you, listen, Kim, 
you know, we've been doing this for a while and I do see that you're one of the direct reasons mm -hmm. that my oh, show you, is right, in, I, in popularity. And so therefore I feel like I should be sharing with he, you. No, he you said that, did, but you he did. Said, he said he made me relevant. What? He said he made me relevant. That's when ridiculous. It gets better on the last Wait, hold on. I know. Stop. I have to address, I have to address that. Behind the Velvet Rope is a podcast that one of their or their most popular shows are related to Bravo celebrities, period. Friends of uh, more than that, whatever. Old timers, new timers. The fact that uh, David had you on his show doing interviews, got him press, was what he did anyway. And then, you know, the fact that you were willing to join him yeah. and do a week to week show, yeah. like gave him content that he well, knew. I, he said he made me relevant. I wasn't relevant. And the best part is when I went and talked to my TikTok girl, she goes, relevant? Mm -hmm. She goes, your posh fashion show, the North Jersey Country Club, of all housewife shows was, was the most, they waited to see it. It was like they couldn't wait. And Bethany Frankel just did an episode on Posh Fight, on me and that thing, on my, my Posh Fight North Jersey. And it was the highest rated episode on New Jersey ever. But that I, I, I know the episode and right. that says something because I, right. I, and, and I was on that show on and off for years. So like, OK. And then the worst part was at the end of the last text, I said, but, you, you know, you're making a ton of money off of me. And he said, people are filling your head with lies. I swear to God, it's indexed. It's going up on my Patreon. People are filling your. So he denied it right to the end. Well, do you want me to tell you what he's been saying? A few things. That yes, I would. Yes, out. I would. All right. So first of all, let me just say this, you guys, at this moment, if you haven't liked and subscribed and hit the notification button, you should. If you want to see more lives of Kim D and I, that's a great way to like show it. And yes. also to spread the word about the live so that people watch it so that Kim D's like, yeah, let's do more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, the way that I'm doing this with Kim D is that when the video drops, the views that it gets in the month, the first month, which is when it all always hits, like everybody's, you know, things, we'll go and split with Kim D. I'll send her the screenshot from YouTube. And then the tips, of course, I will split. Thank you, out. Dana. So that is, um, if you guys feel like thanking Kim, you should do it. And uh, me also, thank you. And so I want to say that. But I want to now you. talk about David Yontif's gossip about you. Oh my God, let me read it because you should really. And there's more coming out tomorrow. He oh, made God. everyone sign up again for September. He made them wait and there'll be more coming out tomorrow. So even though I want this to go away, it's not going to go away and I'm not the bigger person. So guys, everything that's slandered about me, I'm going to address. I will continue to address it until it, until he stops. Okay, so he said, besides the the obvious, right, uh, which we've kind of tapped already, um, he said supposedly in a leaked text message <laughs> to a, a person I know who he talks to, he said that uh, he hates Melissa Gorga and that he believes that you are dealing with some guy named James Preston, who's an attorney. Uh, I think that's no, James Leonard, James Leonard, and that you, James Leonard's trying to get you back on Real Housewives of New Jersey to work with Teresa to take Marge down, which by the way, if it's true, I'm so signing up to watch that next season. <laughs> and then maybe at your Poshmark, Fashion show. Posh, 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 posh fashion show. Oh, posh, yeah. Sorry. You're wrong. so cute. You're wrong. getting so excited. You're getting so excited. Again. I, I did get excited. I lost track. Um. Oh, hold on. We got a super sticker. Thank you. Thank you all. Tip super stickers. All that beautiful, is. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. I um. Just to be clear, we'll include super stickers. Um. So, uh, yeah, and that. Teresa might be coming to your fashion show uh, to try to bring the cameras there to create some drama to call out Marge because allegedly Marge is really uh, getting it because uh, Jackie Goldschneider is finally, although she's been friends with Margaret, 
she's accepting the fact that Margaret, for her own self-benefit, uh, told the cheating story about her husband at the gym. Okay. So that's the rumor. And so everybody's kind of, uh, you know, trying to get Margaret, I guess. Okay. I, well, no comment. I take the fifth. On that I, one, you take the fifth? I plead the fifth. <laughs> I, I plead the fifth. Okay, that's if you guys aren't gonna watch next season, you are now. Okay, because I plead the fifth. I love it. Okay, so um, and now recently, Teresa Judice um, and you started to follow each other again, which surprised some people. Thank you, Fat Boy Bushka. I see you. Just saying. Okay. Um, you guys started to follow each other again. And as I understand it, this happened because you both received a spoof phone call. Nope. No. No. Right. She started following me first. I got a text from a mutual friend. The text said, you have a new follower. I don't follow that. So I'm like, who? Go look. I go look. I go, why? Through text. She saw uh, the video of Melania and I going over her report card that we filmed and she got a little melancholy. So she followed me and I said, you know, I'm going to follow her back. So I followed her back. And then the week after, um, the week after I went to Columbia Inn because I'm going to get the full scoop on the pizza situation. And at that time when I was talking to the manager, whoever it was, my phone rang unbeknownst to me. And when I got home, I looked down, I'm like, a, look, a missed phone call from Teresa. So I text her. I go, um, did you call me? And she goes, wait a minute. Did you call me? So there was a spoof. We both got spoofed at the same time, 3.59 that Sunday. But so she we, followed you first. She followed me first. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Let's play in this game. <laughs> okay. Who do you think out of the following people is doing the spoofing. Are you ready? And just use a guess. Do you think it's a fan? No. Do you think it's Jennifer Aiden? No. Do you think it's Louis Ruelas <laughs> trying to get you and Teresa together? It could be possibly. <laughs> I, I don't know. And I'm I know. Right, but I'm not going to say it was a bad thing. It, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say it was a bad thing. It was a good thing. You guys got to be friends again. Yeah, but she had told me through text that she was getting a lot of them that day. Like she was getting an Andy Cohen one. She got a couple of them. Okay. Um, you know, so I don't know. You know, right. I, I really don't. I, I'm going to say I don't know. Could be. Um, we are not cooking in each other's pots right now. We are not in talks. It was just um, a kind of break the ice moment um, because she was very uh, responsive to my Original, my text saying, did you call me? Because if she did call me, I would have talked to her. You know what I mean? I think that what both of us have to say should be talked out. I, I believe she needs to know what I felt she did. I think she does know because a few people have told her. And um, everybody's like so worried. Oh, are you going to become a Teresa fan? Are you going to forgive her? Listen to me. I'm not going to be anything. I'm still going to be me. Kim D, who says what I feel and says what I want to say, I'm not going to go one way or the other. Like I said, I'm going to be neutral. You can do it. You can do it. It's all you. It's it's there. I I know that in the New Jersey landscape, everybody really likes to team, and that's fun, and that's cool. I get it. Yeah. But like the truth is, everybody's got character building shit in their past. Yes. We'll call it that to be positive. Right. Um, everybody's got, you know, their agendas. Don't kid yes. yourself. No, that's to the I'm table, saying, yeah. like beautiful, yeah. you know, like an yeah. angel. And so in this landscape, even if you're participating on the show, you got to pivot. Somebody 1, hits you one minute, you got to hit back. Somebody else comes is nice to you. You, you take it in for a minute. Then you yes. kick them out again. By the way, this is the Italian Irish way with our one thousand percent. So, so I don't want in. anyone. Don't get your panties in a wad, okay? Yeah. I am not going one way or the other. All right, uh, it's just not okay. Just relax. That's all Listen, that was. You can have it. it also has doesn't have to do always with the wives. It can have Listen. to do with the husbands. I know. So I know. It's like you know, 
you say you have a positive moment with the Gorgas, but Joe says something jerky, then that ends it with Melissa for a minute. And now you're back over at Teresa and Louis' house. That's a hey. Listen, so it is what it is, but I don't want anyone to think that, you know, I'm this crazy person who's going to fall for every little thing. No, Bro, no, no. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so next question. All right. So I wanted to talk to you about the, the fashion show for a minute. Uh, a few people were upset that DM me because not about your fashion show, but because David canceled the live that you guys were doing together. And so some of them are going to go to the fashion show, I guess, instead. I love that. Okay. So I'm just saying to you that some of the fans felt hurt that David canceled the show after they brought tickets because they guess. Yeah, but he, but he, he never told them. So for instance, let me explain to you what happened. Yeah. So the day that I walked away from the show, he said, what do you want? I said, I'm not going to do it. And he goes, well, I'll do it alone. Okay. Like, okay. So I immediately, it wasn't my place to put it up. It's his podcast. It's his thing. You know, I didn't say who did I ever think he wasn't going to tell people. So I called my friends and they called city winery and they said, we want our money back. They go, well, we can't do that. They go, but Kim's not going to be there. And they, what? So then they must've reached out to him and then they canceled but he never put it up that he canceled. So they would only, they only uh, gave people money back as of August 22nd. I felt terrible. I didn't know any of this. All right. So you guys who are on here that felt like you didn't get your refund or whatever, it's now time to go chase that because apparently it's been resolved by David. Yeah. So ask him to do that and go ahead and plug your fashion show, Kim D. Okay. So it's October 5th. Um, it's at my favorite like restaurant here, Batagra. They do a great job DJ. They have the lights going. It's so much fun. Their food is excellent. Mm -hmm. The ticket's 128, but it includes, which where are you going for this? Red wine, white wine all night, a four course dinner, the show, a DJ, and we dance Stop and it. stay there pretty. Yeah. People are flying in for it. So you know what I want to do for the people that bought tickets and they can, um, they can show me, they can show me proof that they got stuck. Okay. I would like to give them a credit towards either a posh t-shirt or a mug or something like that. I can't take money off the ticket because it goes towards their dinner. You know, I, mean, I can't do right, that, right, right. but I would love to give them something or credit on my website. I will do that. Okay. Will you so, have merch at the event? Yes. So you yes. guys, if you go to the fashion show and you bring your proof that you didn't get paid, you could show yeah, us. 1000% because that, I was devastated by that too. I was more, I'm just mortified by the whole thing. You know, it's not fair. It's not fair to city winery to not give their money back either. Look That's at not this. Cool. Check this out, Scotty Too Hottie 52. Dave still is keeping the $14 playing with the big boy Patreon Saturday membership for one Saturday episode, which is still named that without Kim. Hey, Kim Scott Fierro here from your Pat channel. I don't know what that part is, but I okay. guess there's something the $14 part. Yeah, because because he would he has something coming up about me. He's going to reveal all dirty secrets. All this that there are no dirty secrets. I'm an open book. All the bad things I've ever done on Saturday, and so he waited because it's September. So they got to pay the fourteen dollars for the month. You understand? So yeah, bring it, bring it. Bring oh it. my God, I'm sorry. Okay, so no, that's, that's all right. That's that. And now. Let's talk about what happened with the falling out with Margaret and David. I don't know if it involved you or not, but everybody was asking about this because it was like somehow David was like really good friends with Margaret and he was being invited to all of her events. And he even appears on Real Housewives of New Jersey, like yeah. even at her mom. I think, it, I think it had to do with Laura, Laura Jensen, I think because he made friends with her again. Because yeah. he had Laura Jensen on his show or something. Yeah, with me. With me. I brought her on. So, yeah, I listen, I, I had nothing to well, do with that. So, Margaret got pissed yeah. because of that? Yeah. Weird. Why? Giving her a platform? Really? Yeah. I feel like, Margaret, Margaret, if you're watching this, which I'm sure sometimes you do, please know that giving someone a platform to tell some bullshit is is not really an attack. It's just more dr drama for you to have play out on your yeah, story. And, well, and I don't think a lot of the stuff she said is bullshit. You know, I like Laura. Laura's going to come on my show. Um, 
listen, people can make their own opinions. All right. They're the Laura's own... experience of Margaret is hers. And exactly. Margaret's experience of Laura's is hers. hers. So she can say, oh, I think it was she wanted to get on the show. And Laura can turn around and say, I think you were obsessed with yourself on the show right. and you forgot about our friendship. Right. And right. Sure that's their story. And that's to tell. their that's but their I happen to like her. I happen no. to like her. And I'm gonna tell you something. I'm said this on my uh on my podcast, I don't hate, like Margaret has been saying, why does Kim D hate me? I don't, I don't, I don't hate her. I don't, I've never hated anyone. Okay. So I want to really start, you know, fresh with everyone, new season, fresh, um, you know, and I said this on my podcast, so I don't hate, but no one's going to tell me who to bring on my podcast. No one's going to tell just like, they can't tell you. I'm going to interview wh whoever I want and they're going to say whatever they want. We live in the United States still. And it's freedom of speech. Speaking of that, I have a favor. You, I know you're waiting for my favor. <laughs> okay, I can't wait. I wish I had drum roll sound effect. Okay, here's my favor. I want to interview Joe Mastropoli with you. Oh. oh. Together. <laughs> did he agree? Did he agree to your um I'm trying. I'm okay. reaching out, All but right, I, well, let, I could me, do it alone, but I don't want right, to. I want to do it with me, you. Let me think about that one. Let me think about that because you come know, on, that's, Kim, do that's this. That's a with tough me. one for me. That's a tough one for me, and I'll explain to you off camera why. Okay, okay? Well, that's it. a tough one, but we'll talk about it off camera. All right, we'll I love it. it. Just think about it. Yeah, we'll talk okay. about it. Okay. Now, uh, some people asked me to ask you, uh, kind of on that point, is that do you have any beef with Kim G? Or no. something about Kim G. She doesn't like me at all. She has a beef with me, but I don't have a beef with her. All right. So that's funny. I'm glad you set the record straight on yeah. that. I, I don't know her at all. I just yeah. was we were okay. We were sister-in-laws. We were very close. I don't want to, yeah, she's my sister-in-law. She was married to my stepbrother. I introduced them. Are you serious? Yeah. And then you guys. That's how I got her on the show. You got her on the show. I got her on the show to be Danielle's friend. She was my sister-in-law. If you I start barking no, again, you're in trouble. I had no idea. Yeah, she was so my sister-in-law. That's sister -in -law. why they're upset. I couldn't. I know that they. Everybody was like Kim D, Kim G, Kim D, Kim G. But I was yeah, like, yeah, we were fun together. We had a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. She's trying you know. to do another show now. She said she wants to go on an, another show that she wants to do, I guess. To okay, good for her. God bless. Like I said, I got no issues. Is she is she still with your it, party? No, your they broke they they he's remarried. They're divorced for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is she does she hang out in New Jersey? Do you see her sometimes, around? Sometimes, sometimes. Once in a while. I haven't seen her in years. I saw her when my stepfather passed. Um, and that's the last time I saw her. Okay, so um, you guys tell Kim G to make amends with Kim yeah, G. Yeah, absolutely. Might see them Let her come collab. on my podcast. I would love it. Could you imagine? No, I can. I can't. And, and I, I want Danielle Staub on my podcast. I really do. I think she was misled. Also, I'd love to talk to her. Well, I really Dan Danielle is fab. Let me tell you. Well, yeah. if you think Kim G, will you tell her to come on my show too? Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Okay, I love it. Okay, and you can tell Danielle to be on mine. Okay, I'll, 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 no one can control Danielle. She no, is I know. Woman. I know. But I will send, I will send the shout out to her for sure. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, Bo Deedle. How does Bo Deedle play out in all this? Like, he's, he's supposedly friends with David now, and he's going to come for anybody that, comes for David. He's like working. Well, first of all, let me tell you something right now. I'm getting word to Bo. I'm, I'm friendly with Bo. He's known me for 25 years because we used to be at Rails all the time together. I'm telling Bo that Dave, that, that Kuma Sikyam is saying this. He will not appreciate it. He will not appreciate it just like he didn't appreciate uh, Rulaha, excuse it, his name. I don't believe that's true for a second. Okay. I really don't. And I don't think Bo will appreciate it. So I'm going to get word to Bo about his name being thrown around. Well, I want to thank you for uh, teaching me how to pronounce Louis's name <laughs> properly. I know how to pronounce it. You know that. And, it's, oh. and I tease. I call him Rulajas, but I know it's Ruelas. I know how to say his name. But it's, but it's my little game that I play. That's who I am. I just like I call Kumasikam, Kumasikam. Uh, you know, I don't, that's going to be his name. 
Um, it is what it is. That's who I am. I, I'm not fearful in any way. I don't give a shit if people like what I say or not. I'm going to be me forever, forever, okay. but I'm okay. fair, but I'm fair. Okay. So let me ask you a question. What do you think? Give me your opinion on the fact that the rumor is that Marge, um, spread the cheating rumor and Jackie's coming for redemption on this season. They've said this now, by the way, a, a rumor mill for a few seasons. They've been saying Jackie's coming for Marge on a few seasons. So I don't even know if this is true. I should have said that, but it's like maybe Jackie now is a friend of, and she was looking for something. So she's like, what can I do? <laughs> you know, I thought like, it was true from the beginning. I did too. I, I, thought, think Marge totally I thought it was true from the beginning. I thought the rumor was true. And I thought it was that she said. It. So, yeah, that's what that's my opinion, guys. My I opinion see, too. Actually, I didn't see him with my own eyes. It's yeah. called an opinion. I thought it was true. I think it is true. My opinion. No, I totally get it. All right. So here's another gossip I want to share with you. Supposedly, Dolores is Polly has been hanging out with Louis Ruelas and hanging out with John Fuda and the other group, which John Fuda said at the reunion, he would not be friends with anybody that was also friends with Louis Ruelas, pick a side. And so allegedly uh, an altercation happened between Polly and John Fuda nice. at an event on the upcoming season. And that causes a bit of a rift between Dolores and Rachel. Now the fans are sort of like, uh, we don't really want that housewife, uh, the house husband drama, stay out of it, Polly and John Buddha. But just for the purposes of today's show. It's all good now. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. So all they good. worked it out. Good to know. It's all good. And Polly is very close friends with Louis. They talk every day. He is good friends with them. Yeah. So I think um, that's sort of interesting that Polly's playing the fence like Dolores does. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, I don't, this is the thing about this. I don't believe he should pick who uh, you can't, if you're going to be friends, we're, we're not 10 years old. If you're going to be friends with him, you can't be friends with me. But what I do believe is if you don't kind of trust someone 100%, yeah. you could say, listen, we can be acquaintances, we can be friends, but I don't trust the dude you're hanging around with. So we're going to we're gonna keep it cool. We're going to keep our friendship cool. You know, you're not going to be in my inner circle. And that's fine. That's fine. But in Paulie's defense, he has the right to be with friends with whoever he wants. No one can well, tell me what to do. I, I can only imagine that at this point, some of the cast members have to be wanting to drag John Fuda, like they dragged Louis Ruelas, to be fair. Why? Right? With all the stuff that's come out about Fuda. Well, I'm not happy with that. He was 20 something years old. Yeah. He became a very good father. He yeah. became a good husband. He took care of his son since he was two. Okay. So I'm not crazy about the stories. I'm a John Fuda fan. I'm a Fuda family fan. And I am certainly not a Justice for Britney fan. Absolutely <laughs> not. So what a person does at 20 or 19 and then turns his life around and becomes really an upstanding citizen. And I think a wonderful father and a wonderful husband. I mean, I don't want to hear that shit. I just don't. I'm glad there was no social media around when I was 20. Okay. So yeah. no, I'm not. No, they could, they could come from all they want. I have his back. So your your position is, but what do you think about the cast doing that? That's what I'm asking. I know I you're. I don't. I think a couple of them will. Okay, but I don't think the rest of them will. I think a couple of them will ride on that those you know ride on that bandwagon, mm -hmm. but I don't think all of them are going to do that because I think a lot of them people that I know admire yeah. his fathering, admire yeah. the way he's a husband and the family unit. Yeah, they they don't they want to protect it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, what do you think the drama is going to be then? There's not much. <laughs> Sounds like crap so far. Honestly, there's not much. I, I'm hearing that there's not much drama. It's uh, yeah, they're getting a little nervous. Not much yeah. drama. I that's yeah, I, I kind of feel that way. Um, 
All right, let me ask a question. Uh, let's see one more thing here about this. My, my glasses yeah. were hurting my nose. I took them off. I, 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 you know, I got my lens replaced on what? my eyes. Oh, see, I don't need contacts. It's just that, like, when I'm reading or whatever, I can see a little better. So I only use um, the readers, one point seven five. That's what I did, but yeah. I hated it on my nose. I actually well, have perfect were, vision. These, these, these were heavy. I get the ones right off of Amazon. Everybody's been asking me about my colored ones. They're they're great. They're blue. They're I lost them all. I, I just ordered them off of Amazon because they're nice and light. Yeah, I just wanted you to know if you have to get your lens replaced because you're doing content and you can't do this all the time. Right. I'm just saying I did it and it was a great experience in the end. It was scary at first, but then it was like awesome. All right, good. All right, so let me ask you a question. Have you uh, heard anything about Joe Judice in the Caribbean? Um, I mean, I see some of his videos. I, you know, I know that his kids are there often. I know this, a lot of his friends are visiting him. I don't really know anything else. I, I, I really don't. I don't follow. It was just there. On. And I was looking for him and I asked everybody, does anybody know Joe Judas? And nobody knew him. Nobody. That's hysterical. Yeah, no, I don't really, like I see his reels come up and I see when his daughters are there. They absolutely adore him. Those of kids, adore him. they adore him. They adore him. Of course. Um, well, I know that they're going to cover Melissa Gorga's daughter going to college and Melissa right. like bringing her. She went to, I guess, Udell, and then right. Teresa's daughter went to University of Michigan. So we're going to see that. No, Louis we're in, I, I don't think she filmed that. The daughter didn't want it. Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. Oh, the, um, the other daughter filmed it. Uh, Gorga's daughter, but Teresa's daughter didn't want it filmed. And I don't. Teresa stayed there for about four days. Oh, Give them credit nice. for that. The kid didn't want it. I think that they didn't film it. They might have filmed them packing the truck. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't yeah. know, but I know the rest, you know, wasn't. So listen, you know, that I, I like hearing that because I want the kids to do what they want to do, you know, what yeah, they feel no, comfortable they with. Forced to be on TV. Yeah. If they're not getting paid. Right. Um, right. Uh, Louis Ruelas, I guess, bought a bunch of uh, Michigan, like, uh, merch and gave it to Joe Judice as a present. That's nice. Yeah. That's, that's very thoughtful. It was. That's very thoughtful. You know, it really is. You know, I think that I have very mixed emotions um, about what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. I really, really do. Um, I believe Teresa is madly in love, head over heels, walking on air. But I do believe there's a little like a little drama here and there because I think that he's sensitive. And when these things happen to him, like on the show, and whatever, I think he pouts a bit. Um, but I heard he's really good with the girls, like extra, extra, extra wonderful with the girls. So there's a mixed bag of stuff going on in there and you can't get everything. And I just believe that um, there's some good, there's some bad, but there'll be more coming out. There'll be more coming out, you know, but I think right now she's floating. Teresa's floating. You know, I, I really believe that. And that will, from the perspective of, Teresa's viewpoint, it seems that it's a great relationship for her. Correct. Right? And Correct. so from that viewpoint, you can be really happy for Teresa from that perspective. And I think all the other stuff that's surrounding him, you know, that is between him and those people. Right. And I, 1, and, and, and it, it is for sure shocking you know, horrific, yes. scary stuff. But to be fair, I'm not sitting with Louis Ruelas talking to him about it. So I can't no. say, you know, hey, Louis. Uh. Yeah. You know, so, you know, listen, do I believe people can change in a relationship? I do. I've watched it happen in relationships that I was in. They changed for me and I changed for them. Um, you know, and everything's yet to be seen. Everything's yet to be seen. Do I believe a lot that I heard? I do believe it. I do believe a lot that I yeah. heard. Well, it's important. I've seen, documents, so seen, it, it's seen, it, seen it with my own eyes, the crazy behavior on the show. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. what I hear from people that are right in the realm of things, he's very good to the kids and supposedly he's good to her. There's a little drama because, I, but, um, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, I, take people at face value the way they treat you. I don't know. You know, well, I had a theory that maybe he might have some 
something that hasn't been diagnosed that might set him into like a mania. And when he's in mania, he can't, he does really horrible things with no filter, knee jerk, no screening or whatever. Okay. And, you know, if, if that was maybe regulated, he wouldn't be that way because okay. deep down he's not like maybe uh, it's like he's three guys. like or Yeah. Two and people. also, and also right now. I'm not a doctor. That's just. Yeah. No, right, right now. now he could be very happy with her. You know, right now he could, he could be happy with her. Yeah. You know, I mean, listen, this, this relationship still new, honey. You know, when you're together five yeah. years, six years, 10 years, let's talk. This yeah. is a new, fresh. Yeah. They just got back from their honeymoon. They're going on beautiful vacations. They took the whole family up for Christmas to Mexico. Then they all went to Greece. They're living the life, you know? So yeah. It's new and they keep it fresh. So we don't know. We don't, you don't know what's going to happen in the future, but not for nothing. She's taking a ride and she's enjoying it. Right. She didn't, she never had this kind of life before she met Louie. Do you understand? She didn't have this with Joe. So, you know, she was cooking clean. When I was on the phone with her, she was up till 1.32 in the morning folding laundry and doing the show and taking care of all those kids. You know, so this is new for her. Yeah, this no, I can totally see why she would be into this. Right. <laughs> like right. he wants to have fun. Yeah. He works out with me. You know, he's not cheating on me um, you know, or whatever, you know. So yeah. I suppose that if that is all accurate, what I just said, then right. she's If happy. it's all accurate. If absolutely. it's all accurate, because I've heard those rumors too. But I'm Me saying, too. Me right? Too. So Kim and I are always like, we're trying to give our opinion, but we know so much. Gossip. Yes. <laughs> it's really yes. Hard to balance it. Yes. Um, okay. So let's, um, I want to just call out this because it's funny. <laughs> Did you see this? No, because I didn't, I gotta put other glasses it on. Says, it says yawn tiff. I'm dying. Look. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Oh, this is my friend's glasses. Ooh, these are too strong. And then it says, uh, PK, repeat where Kim D will be in New Jersey. I live near here. Please, I need to buy tickets. Okay. Batagra restaurant in Hawthorne. The tickets are on my website, poshbykimd.com. Okay. You hit the search button and you Put fashion show. You could buy the tickets right there. And I get the email. So I'll see you. I'm the one who seats everyone. Um, I do all the special seating. Um, this one's going to be a lot of fun. It's really going to be a lot of fun. So, yes, go on my website. Go hit the search button. Search uh, fashion show. And they come right up. And you could buy your tickets. Well, I want to now tell you that something I'm sure you already know. Oh, what's this? David did Margaret dirty. I wish Margaret would come on Kim D's show and explain what happened with David. <laughs> I welcome that. I heard they're all on a gag order. So I don't no, know. No, they are. They're on a gag order. So they're on a. Like, right now, you know. Yeah. Well, they're on a. Actually, what it is is Bravo PR sits with them, and if they talk about anything to do with Real Housewives of New Jersey, they will say you have to cut it, or they can't say it. So they're allowed to talk about other things, but not. Oh, the show. okay, okay. Well, then so I you welcome talk the interview. To her about like. Then I welcome shows. the interview, and I'd love to talk about her makeup brushes and everything. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go to Walmart and go get them. I want to see them in person. I I, I want to. Not interested in the drink because I don't drink out of a can and I don't like seltzer. Yeah. I'm sure people do, but I am going to go take a ride to Walmart. I'm going to get the brushes and a couple different things. Um, so yeah, no, I would love it. You know, we'll see. Let's see. Let me know how the brushes are. I will. I okay. will. Okay. Yeah. I'll be I doing know. it on my podcast. I might even use them on the podcast. All right. Well, you just tell me on the DL so I know. I will. I will. All right. Great. Because that's important. Yes. <laughs> Very important. Very um, important. Okay, so also the the rumors are that right now Danielle is uh, being vied for. So a lot of the cast members are fighting for Danielle to switch teams from Teresa Louie to the Gorga, whatever other side is, the Margaret Gorga side. And so they've been trying to sort of seduce Danielle <laughs> from both sides mm -hmm. and and. Oh my God, what's happening? Go ahead. Uh, and so what do you think about that? I think it's true. Yes. And so how do you feel about uh, Danielle uh, being wooed by everybody? Well, I think that, I think that she's, um, I think she's a lot of fun. I think that she makes a good housewife. And I think she was played last year a little bit. 
you know, and I think she learned a couple lessons and I think it's smart for her to be friends with everyone. Well, I felt, I don't know about you, but I felt that they used the mind, the producer mind F on Danielle quite a bit last Yes, evening. they did. Yes, and they did. when she was crying in Ireland, a lot of that wasn't necessarily to do with what was happening on camera as much as what it was happening, what she was thinking was happening because of the producers. Right. Like, you know right. how they make you insecure? Yes. Like you might not be getting casted or the, you know, oh, the camera's yes. on following me the light right. is on me the right. thing. and so i saw that psychological i'm like i bet she thinks after all the shit she's been through on uh, so far in the season they're gonna like keep her a friend of and rachel's gonna get it you know how they right. do that? Right. Oh, they, absolutely because yeah saying, so i was like they're me. making her think that rachel's getting it and she isn't <clears throat> i agree i agree because they do do that yeah, and they, and were, they, and they cry were. about, and they pretend it's about something else, but you're actually crying about the casting. I'm That's sorry. sad. That's sad. You know, it's sad for her. That's sad. But I'm glad she made it, and I'm glad she's a housewife. Something she really, really wanted, and I'm glad she got it. Well, Manso, uh, Caroline Manso said that Danielle didn't thank her uh, for helping introduce her to getting on the show, and well, that's that she, not nice. Yeah. And I said, I don't think that's nice either. No, now, no. I know Danielle has been struggling to get on TV for a long time. She long was time. on the reality <laughs> TV show on MTV for a bit, trying to go to LA and come back. Right. So why wouldn't she, you know, do the thing? Man, you know, what? I, I would send a huge basket of something like, I'm huge. Like, thank you right? so much. You made my dream come true. You know, but I got to tell you, a lot of people forget where they came from. A lot of people, you know, use you as, excuse me, what are you looking at right now? You're looking at me. Yeah. Somebody using you to get somewhere. <laughs> Hello. Meet your sister, you want to say? I'll tell you one thing right mind. now. There ain't no baskets in my front door. Okay. No <laughs> baskets at my front door. Thank you, me. No, you just get you're just getting dragged all over town. Dragged baby. all over. Dragged all <laughs> over. Um, yeah, dragged all over. So yeah. No baskets. No fruit. No wedding even, soup at your doorstep. <laughs> not, not even a drink. I never even received a drink. Did you go to his house in the Hamptons? Yes. I went to it uh last year, the was first one. I don't know. And now I went, yeah, I went this year. I stayed overnight one night. <clears throat> yeah, it was very beautiful. It's a beautiful town home. It's yeah. he doesn't own it. He rents it, but it's still very pricey situation, you know? Yeah. 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 No, I know. Everybody was like, he owns all these houses. I'm like, I no. think he rents them. He rents um, them all, but it doesn't matter. They're expensive, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, all right. That you, you were probably like, they're going, oh, wow, David, really? Seriously? I don't have a <laughs> to rent. I have one house. Thank you. I own it. Thank God. Oh I own my it. gosh. So let me ask you uh, something else. Have you got? Have you heard about any of the um, feuds that are going on with other uh, podcasters? Like uh, right now, there's a feud with Heather McDonald. Oh, my Dana. I guess it's just me, guys. I hope you're enjoying it. And um, if you really like this, I'll do it once a month with Dana. Okay. Maybe even more. I mean, I enjoyed, listen, I'm sitting in my, um, in my bedroom right now. I got my other dog to calm down. So I love, I love chatting with her. So I'm hoping that you come back. I'm hoping Dana figures out what's going on on her end. Um, but I love doing this and I love the, all the love that you've been giving me. I see everything you're writing on Patreon. I see all the DMs that you're getting. Oh, I'm, I'm talking to them. Dana, I'm there. I'm, I'm back. I, I, was, you. I, ke I kept them going. I kept them going for you. Oh my God. Thank God. Thank goodness you did. Now I'm going gonna... to. I can't see you, but you know, I can hear you. I'll come back. I'll come back okay. in a minute. Okay. I, there's definitely some technical problems occurring. Okay. Here. Okay. Um, okay. So what I was actually asking was, did you know about these feuds that were happening with Heather McDonald and, uh, Justin Martindale? You're no, about? no. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I like so, Heather McDonald. I was, she was one of the first podcasters recently 
Um, I think it was during COVID that I she asked me to do her show. Did you, know, you do the, it? Yeah, I did have a McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did I, it too. She actually got me started. That's why I was like, she's fabulous. A, a like lot her. of the fans were like upset with Heather over Justin. I guess he did a, a dump where he said, um, you know, that he felt betrayed by her and that really? she felt used by her, that she wasn't paying money for him to be on her show. Boy, oh boy, her here show we go. Yeah. 33 episodes. And so it was really wild. And the reason I brought it up to you is because it was so similar to yeah. what happened with David. And I think the bigger picture here is that there's, a, you know, when you have someone repeatedly going on your show, and even if you're the, the the nicest, best person, you know, I think you have to stop at some point and say, listen, uh, do you feel exploited or do you feel like, you know, I should be paying you so you don't ruin your friendship? I agree. You know, the person in power, not the person who's not in power. I agree. I absolutely yeah. agree. I absolutely agree. So, so I, I kind of felt bad, but uh, about that. And I, I wish that Heather and Justin make up, obviously, in the future. I think, you know, unfortunately, that was a, a misunderstanding. But I do know Heather helps a lot of people. And yes. although Justin dragged her, I think that it's important to remember that everybody has insecurities in their friendships. I agree. Especially in Hollywood. Yep. And, you know, you can't blame somebody for being insecure. In no, life. It, no it, I agree especially being as big as Heather is because she gets, you know, with the amount of fans she has, hundreds of thousands of yeah. fans, they're, you know, they're going to come for her. Well, Just, here's the thing. And she's clearly making a ton of money. There was no reason why she couldn't pay him. I don't know. You know, I don't know what went on, but it's just not fair. It's well, that's of, what his, that's it's what kind of greedy. When they act like that, that's pretty greedy. I'm not greedy. I'm very giving. I, I'm not selfish in any way. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely generous to the people that I love and my friends. That I was generous with him, with Kumasikam. That was generous with my time. Saturday mornings, waking up at the crack of dawn, not even be able to drink my coffee. So like, but that's what I do for a friend. I was generous to Teresa. Okay, I loved her. I did everything for her. Um, that's who I am. And, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. people take kindness for weakness. And they take yeah. advantage of it. Well, I just think um, here, this is what one of the fans said here. Hold on a minute. Oh, wait. That, thank you. <laughs> um, here we go. Yeah. So a lot of the fans saw a parallel with Heather and your feud with David. It was mm -hmm. around the same time. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's a really interesting conversation. It's sort of like the reality reckoning. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. This conversation's happening in a lot of places. I agree. So I don't I know agree. if it, like, insert Heather and Justin, insert you and David, right. insert Andy Cohen and, you know, Rachel yeah. Levis. Yeah. So anyway, um, I just thought I would bring that up because I thought okay. it was kind of interesting. Um, I want to talk to you about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills for a minute. Can we do okay. that? Because sure. There's, I mean, do you have any other New Jersey gossip? Because, I mean... Well, not that I'm going to share here. Can you give us one? Come on. it's We're getting paid here. Well, no, I I, I did share some of it. Um, let's Just see. One. Let's see. Let me, I, ask me about Beverly Hills and they'll get something good. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. So I want to talk about how it came out that Erica Girardi said that um, PK Kemsley and Dorit Kemsley's relationships is on the rocks. No shit, Sherlock. I <laughs> predicted that a long time ago. Now, let me tell you what I thought happened. Sure. The, night, the night that PK got DUI and he didn't call Dorit until the next day. You know why? I think, I think because he was on a date. I think he had a girl. Why else wouldn't you call? Oh, I didn't want to put you through that. Yeah, okay. I got a George Washington bridge to sell you. He didn't call her because he was doing something he wasn't supposed to do. And he used Maurice Hill, who might have been doing something too. I don't know. Okay. So it's really interesting that Mauricio is having issues with Kyle. And the reason is that I believe he was doing something. 
that night. And that's why he didn't call Dorit. Why else? Oh, I didn't want to get you upset. Yeah, okay. I don't believe it for a second. I believe he was doing something. Well, I've got some tea for you. Okay. So I have friends in London a lot that know PK's circle. Okay. And they all cheat on their wives. There you go. I <laughs> and, believe and pretty it. Pretty openly. I believe it. That's what I'm saying. I believed it then and I believe it now. I be, I said I said this that they're because first of all, I personally Dorit is drop dead gorgeous. And she seems like she idolized this guy who is not a looker. He's not a looker. Let's face it. Um, he has money, but you know what I say about money, that when they take their wallet out at night and put it on your bed stand, now you're in bed with that person. So it's not about money for me. Yeah, they have to have power. They have to have some money, but they still got to be, you know, good yeah, looking well, no, You have to have sex with them. Yeah, got it's, oh, it. it. like you, gonna, it's the worst. That's not going to happen. Ugly man that it's only not, you you have to keep happen. saying like, oh, he, but he does this for me. Yeah. That you're, as you're having sex, you're like, but he buys me purses. No, <laughs> never going to happen. All right, so I thought of something real quick. I hope this is enough. Um, let's go back to Brittany, baby mama and Fuda for a minute. Yeah. Because Brittany was in a halfway house. She had gotten out of federal prison in a halfway yeah. house. And that's when um, Diana Cooper reached out to her and a couple of the podcasts reached out to her. She wasn't supposed to do this. So she violated. She is back in federal prison since June. But is it because John Fuda reported No, her? no. You no. sure? Because she I said didn't. John Fuda reached out to her and no, said no, that he that's, was going to report her. No. They knew because it hit the news. There was the article. John Fuda had nothing to do with it. He could, John Fuda can't put her back in federal prison. He's not. He can't. He she, did threaten her, though. He did say it. Yeah, um, so what? The the violation, when you're in halfway house, if you violate what you are not supposed to do, text to the media, you're not, they got her text, they got everything, and she is now back in federal prison till possibly January. Oh, and, she is. Yes. So that's what happened. She reached out. Also, also, she never once tried to get visitation in, when she was in and out. Never went to court once with him to get that kid. Well, so, he did say to her defense, I'll play the other side. Can I? Yes, you can. can. I play the other side? Okay, I'm going to be the other side. You Go be, ahead. You be Fuda and I'll be the Go other ahead. side. Okay. So my uh, answer to that is you didn't serve me with the court documents. And I thought you had to do that. And I didn't even know about it. And then all of a sudden, all this stuff was happening to me. And I couldn't afford an attorney. And I, you know, was struggling. And by the way, you're the one who got me on drugs in the first place. Nobody gets anybody on drugs. <laughs> Nobody gets anybody on drugs. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> Just stop it. You are what you are. If you drink. Nobody puts a gun to your head to drink. If you continue to drink, even when you're not with the person, that's your issue. If you do drugs, you do drugs. Okay. But you were a dealer. You were a dealer. So what? So what? So what? That doesn't mean you have a gun to your head. I know, you know what? I know people who were dealers years ago that their wives and their girlfriends would never touch it and their best friends would never touch it. Okay. So no, no, don't stop blaming other people for what you did. You became addicted and you walked away from your two-year-old son for drugs. Bottom line, there's no excuse for that. No. Well, it's not the way you're telling it totally, okay? You 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 weren't taking care of your son in the beginning. Your mother was. So what? He's a, he's a so, and you, guy. So, and you had a nanny, too, that was I taking had a care nanny. of it. And, I I, had... and I was trying to see him and you oh, weren't making Oh, I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> and why would they want to see her? when she was a drug addict. But what, of course he's gonna have his mother help him. Of course he had a two year old baby. I left my husband when my, when my son was eight months old. The minute I, I did it, I got a full-time nanny. I took her out of the nunnery, that'll be in my book, okay? She was a nun. She left the nunnery to take care of her family, meaning give them money. She was from Bolivia and she came and worked for me. God only knows what this poor girl had seen, okay? So no, there, my mother helped me. I had a living. And look, and my son's 34 now. I believe wholeheartedly all that. He had a two, two year old baby, and you're not going to have his mother help him? Of course. And thank God they had the means to do it. And he did a very good job with that boy. So, no, I'm not, I'm not fooling for this. I'm not what happened to Rachel Fuda's nose? Well, <laughs> you know, that can happen. 
you know, you go in, you never know what you're going to come out with. I think, I think she had a little re revision. If I'm not mistaken, it looks a little better. No. Is it a filter? Well, I don't I'm know. Still Brittany, I'm going to say her nose collapsed. <laughs> yeah, it could be. You know, listen to me. It could be because this happened. It's happened to a couple of my friends. If they take too much, or they too take you know too much of that, that can happen. So I still think she's an attractive girl. You know, I do. And oh yeah. I don't know. You know, I listen. I think I, Rachel's very attractive. Yeah, I, I talk. There's a lot of noses on that show. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I talked a lot of smack in the beginning because, you know, there were certain things I heard in Franklin Lakes, um, but I like her. Oh, and by like, the way, like she's wait, 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 wait. Franklin Lakes. Is the they're casting time, mother... a lot in Franklin Lakes. The like, I, I heard they're casting a lot in Franklin yes. Lakes. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, she's, they've, she's, been, she's, they've been like... Uh, Melissa Gorga was hanging out with uh, Franklin Lakes people. Well, she lives in front. Melissa Gorga lives in Franklin Lakes now. No, but Ra she's like, like trying to get in with that group. Oh, absolutely. That's in. what I heard. Yeah. And Rachel Fuda moved for, I come from Elmwood Park and I'm still very good friends with all my friends from Elmwood Park. So Rachel Fuda and John lived in Elmwood Park before they moved to Franklin Lakes. Okay. So, yeah, I have a soft spot in my heart for anyone from Elmwood Park. Anyone. You're from Elmwood Park. I love you. That's it. That's the way we Elmwood Park people roll. You know, so listen. Um, Look at this. I, Look at this. Allison wrote, Dana, I hope you'll help guide Kim D in the podcast world, specifically you. YouTube, because that would be a great financial boost for her outside of patron. Thank you. I'm hoping to help. I told Kim that I would give her any information yes. that I know. And I said, if she wants to come on and earn income with me on here yes. for a while, yes. and then when she's ready to say bye, that's great. Um, no, I'm I won't be ready for it. to say I won't No, but that. I'm down for it. I'm like, I listen, know. everybody, listen, I'm like, I, I'm, people will tell Dana, you. Dana, I don't do that. Look how long I stuck with Kumasikyam. Yeah, I love that guy. I love that name. He was disrespecting me. He was talking down to me. Like, a, who does, who, I never let anyone do that. Okay. I don't know what my, I don't know. I think it's just because I had just lost my mother and I just was selling her. You know what I mean? I was just not paying attention to what was really going on. I don't leave people unless they do something really bad to me. I don't I'm leave sorry people. about your mom. Thank you. Thank you. It was I devastating. You know, like, I, I know in a lot in this world, we just talk shit, but yeah. like, that's a really heavy thing. It was do. it was brutal. Everyone knows my mother. She was on the show with me. She came to every fashion show. We were like we were okay. sisters, twins, soulmates. Yeah. So I lost my grandmother too when she was 103, but it was recent. Right. And I remember that. Ever since she was 90. Wow. And so she was my soul sister too. There you so go. So you know, yeah. you know. I so and then I had this. I was selling her house was in Franklin Lakes. And then once I saw, it took me about a year because it was some environmental things I had to clean up. Um, and then once I sold the house, I really had like a little break, not nervous breakdown, but you know, like a breakdown. Like I didn't want to leave the house. I, I was really, really freaked out because I went to the house every day. You know, that was my, it was my house. She left me the house. So once I sold that, I really went through trauma. So, so what was going on? That little thing didn't mean anything to me because in the bigger picture, it wasn't about my Saturday mornings. It was more about getting through the day of what I was doing. So I think that's what had me distracted for a while, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I want you to, I have something I want to tell you. See, my neck is getting kind of old looking. You see, you see this? Okay. Yeah. So I'm getting Botox injected in my neck and in okay. my Okay. And I'll you let you know that. how it works. It does. You. It works really good. And also there's um, there's micro needling with uh, radio frequency. That really works a lot. What I'll tell you the difference in the Botox. Botox will be a quick fix. But mm -hmm. if you get three treatments of radio frequency, um, micro needling, that will go away. For radio how, frequency, micro. Micro needling with radio frequency. That will go away. Okay, I'm going to try it. Yeah, you should try it. Uh, three, three treatments and that'll go away. And it'll refresh you. It'll make all your new your collagen come back in. It'll make everything nice and fresh and young. The Botox is good for now, but in the long run, you're better off doing those treatments. I'm on semaglutide. Oh, that good for you. Good for I you. I love it. I'm like Dolores. I'm like, woo. Good woo, for woo. you. You do it, girl. You go. You go. But yeah, I would try. I, you know what? I the Botox, I don't know if how much you're getting it for or whatever. 
I would prefer put off the Botox and get your first treatment of the micro needling. It's going to be probably less. Um, and you tell me if you need the Botox. Okay, I love it. And we're, okay. do, that could be another one we do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I can all right, I'll give so, you all kinds of stuff. So let me tell you now, uh, you don't have, do you know what's going on with Kyle Richards and Mauricio? Well, I know that she was uh, accused of having a lesbian affair or an emotional lesbian affair, which, okay. Um, but I believe that he's been having an affairs. Um, so, you know, I thought they made a great couple. I never saw like the hunky Marie, no, like he's not my type. He's not my type. Yeah. No, so, even when I knew him, he's like a lovable, but not. Hun no, he's not a hunk yeah. to me. None of the husbands, not one of them. Or you, but you know who I think is hunky? Nate Cabral, all American. Danielle's husband. Yes, he's I think quiet, he's adorable. Though. Isn't he very quiet? quiet but it's I don't like that. I'm but like, it's good job, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but it's good for her because she's larger than life. Uh, so sure. he lets her shine. Yeah. He lets her shine. Okay, so tell me about Mauricio and Kyle. Well, Kyle, uh, you know, she was traveling in Italy with him and with the family. And she's right. been doing that ongoing. Like, she's been right. doing trips to show the families together. But she seems to be really struggling. And I kind of have some insight on this because, you remember, I was on the season yes. with Mauricio and Kyle, right? So, and uh, anyway... I wanted to share with you that my insight on this. And I okay. think I think when Kyle and Mauricio start openly flirting and seeing other people and all this stuff, right? And I don't believe that um Kyle had a thing with Morgan Wade. Okay. I think it was emotional. I think, I think it was a friendship. Friend. Yeah, yeah, because I've been drunk with many of the cast members and Taylor Armstrong used to get drunk and hit on me. Okay. She right, tried to right. kiss and stuff. And I'd like, eh, cause I'm not at all. No offense, no. live your life, but not my thing. Right. No, me either. So, um, the thing is, is that, you know, that I could have seen, right. If it was Taylor, but Kyle and I partied our ass off. Right. And I party with Faye too. All right. together. And I right. never, even when a drunken haze, had her hit on me, flirt right, with me. Right, right. You know, which it would come out. Like, I just know it would. So I really think that they were just close friends and they bonded too. on this project. And I think Mauricio, um, there, would I, uh, there's so much smoke around Mauricio cheating in tr like with transactional women, yes. meaning they don't Prostitutes, come yeah. They don't come forward yes. you know, in the press because they're transactional. Yeah. Um, that I, I kind of have to believe it now. And the fact that he was close to PK yep. said a lot to me. Because I yeah, was like, and also oh. the fact that they were together that night, they go out alone together a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, there's a lot of heat on that. But I do think that Kyle and supposedly Mauricio was going around Spain, like kind of excited that he was single. OK, uh, with his yeah. friends. But to counter that, all the guys he was with were married. Right. So they were right. all workers. So it wasn't like he was with swinging single guys. Right, 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 right. Marbella. Right. He wasn't. Gotcha. Gotcha. So like to counter that. So I kind of feel like the dynamic between Mo and Kyle mm -hmm. could change because if Kyle starts, Kyle's going to get really jealous if okay. Mo starts to come out like socially looking for women. And even though she's pretending like, yeah, go do it. Yeah. Right. Right. I don't think. How so. about when Andy Cohen said he's available now? Well, and, and she, I think later when, oh, it's okay. It's no problem. But I know deep down inside. Of Kyle is not. On. Yeah, of course. She's not. so of jealous course. of Mo. That's uh, like torture. Yeah, no, she, that's, that's, that's hard to accept. And Anyone. I, and I do think Mauricio has changed a lot because of his show on Netflix. Me too. And he and got like a huge ego. He and was the money. never like that. No, the money can really ruin people. It can really ruin people. I and and the fame because he was famous for being Kyle's husband, not exactly being Mauricio. You man, exactly. Right? Yeah. So no, that's pretty sad. I don't. I don't like it. You know, I don't want to see people, but it happens to all of them. A lot of the marriage can't withstand these shows. Well, I, I really want Kyle. I appreciate Kyle hotting up. 
okay? And I appreciate her breaking through the the stereotype of Kyle. Me too. Like Me I was too. like, good good riddance that Kyle. Like I'm I so agree. glad you did that. Go wear leather, look like I a hoe. Yeah, you know, I look like weight. a hoe. Yeah, lose weight. That's uh, funny. You know, work out. Let people think you're dabbling in lesbian affairs. Yeah, Wait, yeah. Well, it. Oh, that's your wide open girl. I, 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 see, I and she did. And she did. And, and she, she did. did. And the thing is that. That's funny. That's true. Yeah. Now, are and, you watching? Are you watching New York? Um. Yes, I'm. I'm actually recapping New York every week. It's so my feeling on Real Housewives of New York reboot is so far the fans are liking it and they find it popular, but they're not loving it yet. Right. They're not invested in these. Women. They're loving Real Housewives of Orange County, but they're not loving. Right. Uh, I'm not watching Orange County. I never was crazy about it. I am watching New York. I got to catch up on a few shows. My next podcast. Uh, Wednesday that I film, I'm going to be starting to talk about New York. Yeah, um, I have my faves. I don't have my faves, whatever. But I like it because I'm from New Jersey and I go to a lot of these places that they go to. I like the way they dress. I like the fashion on the show. Yeah, you know, the fashion I, is very, awesome. very relatable to me, you know, because I love all that stuff. So, yeah. yeah, so I'm liking it. You know, it's not the kind of drama I'm used to, but you know, so what? You know, but I still like it. I'm watching it. It's not like... It's not like I can't wait for Sundays to see yeah. what's gonna happen, but I'm watching. Yeah, yeah. No, you're you nailed it, right? It, it, there's a few of the girls on the show are not really from New York. Right. Yeah, but they <laughs> so live. There. It comes across, and you That's kind of figure it out. Yeah, over yes. time. Right. Um, and then there are some of the girls that are real New Yorkers, and yes. you can tell. And, yes. and like Erin is a real New Yorker. Yes. The way she depicts herself on this show. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Lynn is not. She's yeah. an LA girl. Correct. And Jessel is not. She's right. a Texas LA girl. Right. And, you know, so there's like all this. And then you go, Uba is, you know, but Uba's been influenced by Chanel Ayan. Right. 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 So she's coaching her. Right. I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. So you know, it's all these those dynamics i would like our next podcast i mean i'll be caught up so maybe we could really go over new york and, oh and cover God. some of that because i'm not really caught up yet so i don't want to give too many comments i want to watch um I, i'm back two episodes so and then i'll be back and i'll watch it so i'm going to watch all three on sunday you know i'll watch all three of them okay whatever. so when you're caught up we'll I go over it one day after after the show yeah so if let's you do want that. It would be more fun for me too because I do them alone always. So okay. I it would be fun as a difference to do one with you. I love it. Let's do okay, it. Let's okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, okay, so then let's talk about um the rumors that Crystal are fighting with the new Real Housewives of Beverly Hills cast member. Um, I think mainly because Crystal always takes the viewpoint of the sort of woke viewpoint and um <laughs> And you know how and I feel about that. I made that very clear. I'm not about woke, okay? I'm the opposite of woke, people. You're not getting no woke shit with me. I like my woke dogs are downstairs. The unwoke are upstairs. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, you know it's some hard. For the, our, I listen. Some, our age group doesn't totally no, get you know it. What, the thing we were not, very non. We. We're not raised in this time no. period. No, you know what? I've heard it. some of the stuff that I'm she said last year. I don't Me know. Me too. But I heard some of the things she was saying last year, and I'd be like shaking my head, going, "You've got to be kidding me!" Like you, you entered my space, and you, what? you we would get naked. We would get naked in the changes into our gym clothes in front of. Like, stop it! You entered my space. Give me a break. I know. Well, I mean, this is the thing. I think you know if we were on. I don't know how anybody survived Real Housewives of New York last season, you know, the season. Oh. Yeah. I would have definitely been canceled. For sure I would have been canceled. <laughs> Unbelievable. True. This is true. I'm sorry. They, right. they were wild. They were wild. Those girls I, were wild. Sleeping with everyone. Did you ever meet with Sonia Morgan? Have you met I, her? I'm not crazy about Sonia. I can't stand Ramona. I think Luann is a doll, absolute friendly doll. I have so many fun stories about her. I'll save some for our podcast. Um, I love Luann, okay, but they're just so openly physical and 
they don't think anything about sleeping I with know. people. I, whoa, I mean, wow. I know. Did you be see cool. it? Be Did cool. Be cool. Don't be old. Way? On crappy I haven't, I haven't watched that. Randomly, Sonia hooked up with some random dude in the little oh town. Oh my God, like, I can't, I can't, I can't. I, I'm just not like that. I'm just not me like that. Me neither. No, I, would, no. I, I was like, I wanted to run through the television set and be I like, know. oh my God. I know. It's Girl, scary. The dirty. I'm, not, I'm not around that. You know what I mean? I'm not around that. None of my peeps uh, do that. So yeah, no, we're just not that girl. You, you know, let me ask you a question. You know Dolores really well, okay? Yes. And Dolores seems kind of prudish, like we are. Is and I that is a thing. I'm from New York. You know, I okay. was raised in New York. I okay. I uh, I was born in uh, Connecticut, and I lived in Boston. And then my mom got in a car accident and died, and I instantly was transported uh, to live I'm with sorry her. To hear that. That. Right. It's okay. Thank you. Um. And I instantly was transported to live with my dad, who was like an executive okay. in IBM, and he was the yupper, a yuppie, right. and all this crap. And I moved into his house. I lived in the Columbia Building on Broadway and 96th wow. Street, in the okay. Orange Building. It was on the New Yorker, uh, Yupper West Side, or whatever. Cool, cool. But the point is, like, there's like a, a vibe and an energy to that, you know, the New York thing. And I, I, I don't know. I just. I feel like I was sort of prudy and we were well, like, I think it's even more generational. I don't think this gen this new generation coming up. Don't think of sex the way we did and don't think of, I mean, it's generational. I mean, I know with, even with my son, you know, my son would tell me years ago, things I didn't want to hear. And he goes, mom, you don't understand these girls. They just do anything. They'll do anything. Like they just, they don't even think I'm like, what? He goes, oh yeah. He goes, oh, yeah, I'm not going to talk graphic because I won't graphically speak, but you can imagine the shit that he would be telling me. And I'd be like, Chris, too much information. He goes, but you know, mom, they're all like that. They're all like that. I'd be like, oh my God, I can't. My I son doesn't like that. My son is, okay, given he's only turning 14, but he says to me, I don't like girls that show off everything. That's it nice. It means that they're advertising for other guys. Good for him. And they well, don't care about me. My son's 34. So, you know, these this has been going on for a while with him. And he just basically- Is he a player? Tell, well, not anymore. Yeah, he was big time. He has a wonderful girlfriend who has okay. children. I mean, I love her. I thank her every day because she really taught my son a lot of good stuff. Like he's a good, respectable guy now. And I love it. I love this side to him. Our relationship is wonderful now. We used to fight, you know, a lot because it was yeah. just, he didn't have a father. His father passed away. So it was always me and him and he lost his grandmother and his grandfather. So with that said, there was like, fight. now we get along like you cannot believe. And it's, I believe it's because of her. I really do. You know what's funny? I'm a single mom. I raised my son, my the father of my son, who was featured on the show I was getting married to on right. Lost Lives of Beverly Hills. Well, he left us okay. when my son was like three and uh, never paid child support and never Terrible. Left. Terrible. And so I did it myself too. So I, I appreciate that side of you. Appreciate you telling yeah. me the story. Um, well, yeah, I just want to say this. A lot of the girls come on and say to me, Dana, I want to be with a wealthy guy, right? And they they say, what does it take? And this and that. And I say to them, well, first of all, wealthy guys are almost all crazy. And the richer they are, the more nuts they are. So like, just know that like, at the higher you go up that echelon, like I can only imagine Jeff Bezos. He must be just a complete, like, he's like, woo, Looney Tuneville for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it takes a certain amount of crazy and risk taking and 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 being mean and hard yeah. to get to that level, right? But what I wanted to say is, I always found with wealthy guys, they would have sex with anyone. You know, that was the thing. But if they if you denied them, just like business, they want you more. One thousand. Every man. Every man. Every man is the more you treat them like shit, the more they'll they love, love you. And so I'm like, why don't you do that? Just hold out, guys. Men, men, men love the hunt. They're they're natural hunters. So if they get if they get their prey and they win so fast, they're not interested anymore. Yeah. You have to, unfortunately, you have to play the game. People goes, well, I don't want to play the game. Well, you're gonna lose. 
Well, then, you then get, you're going to lose. the one that he tosses over to the, the exactly, corner. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So I so feel like, no. well, why is this message not in the young people's? I don't get it people? because they throw themselves at these guys. I mean, I see it. I see what they They're do. They're never going to like you. No. You have to play hard to get. You have to. It's the only way. Unless I you agree. want to have sex, that's different. That's different. If you want, if you want to close for sports, the deal, or you want to close for something else, because it depends on your age, right? Absolutely. So, you know, there was that 20s where you close for sport. Right. It was right. like, if you get older, you close because you really want to <laughs> get the Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you got to play the game, unfortunately. That's their play. Men are born That's my players. new message. For and the they lie. Men <laughs> lie. They're going to say what they can. They're going to say whatever you want to hear to get you. Whatever totally. you want to hear. And, you know, so. You know, well, and we'll win. She lost her head because she didn't have sex with Henry VIII the whole time. She got him. She closed it. She got queen. Then he got it, and he was like, mm, no, "Gotta go." Good. Off with her head. Unbelievable! It's true. It's very true. So no, I'm going to definitely be giving that kind of advice too on my um I on my it. Patreon on my platform. Yeah. So I'll. Uh, I got a lot of rich guys. I married them. I divorced them. I got engaged to them. And the last one was the one that passed away. You don't get any richer, you know, and he was the love of my life. And it wasn't because of the money. That was the cherry on top. So I must have been doing something right. So I guess I'll give a little advice on that. Now, I want you guys to know that, you know, I I, I, I take a different approach, Kim, and I want to share this with you. I do give a lot of advice to people and things, but I do it from the basis that I've had a lot of life experiences okay. that have been good and then bad and this. And so I don't try to be the hero necessarily to people, but I try to be someone that from like you could learn from my mistakes or my triumph because I've had a very colorful life. and. Right. So I say like, you know, on my highs, this is how I got. Like I ran an ad agency, I had 20 plus employees. I'll tell right. you about that, you know, or I can tell you about the bad stuff I've been through too and what I learned and right. how to relate. But, you know, I don't want to be on a pedestal because when you're on a pedestal, people want to knock you right off. Right. And so it's almost better to sit it out. So I was going to tell you that, you know, just know you've had a... a you know, you've had, I know, fans like be so pro you, but even if you get to a position where they aren't, for some reason, like, oh, they weren't. Hated, just they, you know, this is new. They weren't, they weren't pro me. I was the villain. Let's face it. I was the villain when I was on the show. So, you know, that like, it's okay to be both. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I would rather be a villain than a victim. That's for sure. I love it. That's a good yeah. thing. That should be yeah. a shirt. Make yeah. that a shirt. I will. I'm going to make a few shirts. Make that one. That's a good one. I, I think you part. should come out for the Posh Fashion Show and be my guest. Uh, listen, when I get to a, uh, right now, I, I'm paying for my son's SSATs and his okay. admission boarding school. And it's $1,000 just to do the SSATs and okay. apply. So I have to focus on that. But All when right. my okay. son is in his school and on his way, because I'm trying to get him into one of the best schools in the country. Okay. okay. Then I Well, that comes you. first. Then, oh, listen, I have plenty. I have a lot. I will um, come. You'll come. I will be there with you like rah, rah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love All it. right. Well, listen, one last thing and then we'll go. Okay. I want to let you know two things. Vanderpump Villa started shooting in France. Okay, that's a new show Lisa Vanderpump's doing where it focuses like below deck on the staff that work at our villa and they have wow. rich people that go and stay there. I yeah. want us to be some of the rich girls that go and stay there. Oh, I would love it. <laughs> so you need pick, to work that shit. <laughs> pick me, pick me. Pick, pick me, me, pick me. Couple, Lisa, pick me. I, I didn't do you dirty. I, I mean, she did call me fat. You owe me. You oh, owe me. That's but, terrible. Uh, what, oh, I want to bring this up to you. Jennifer Aiden dragging Andy Cohen. Look at really? what she said. To I, uh, okay. I'm sorry, but Andy is beyond rude to Jennifer Aiden every time they interact. It's actually pretty disgusting at Andy. And then Jennifer Aiden said, not every time, but most. I know. Wow. Bite the hand that feeds you. Ooh. But Jen, tell, Jen says it like it. Like Jen doesn't hold back. She don't. 
I love Andy Cohen. I mean, I have nothing bad to say about Andy. I, I love him. He was always respectful of me. I see him out here and there socially. He's wonderful to me. He makes a big deal when he sees me. So, but I do see he that. Does. Side. He's very supportive of you. Which yeah, is he really like, is. Not me, but you. Yeah, you know, he really is. So I got, you know, I, I treat people and yeah. I talk about people the way they talk. But I've, I've seen him do that with Jen. I've seen it and I'm just like, oh boy, you know, but I've seen him do it with a few different people. And I just go, you know, but that's you know what causes Cohen. that though? I, I was told that he gets, somebody says something to him from production. Oh. And he hears stories from like third party people and he takes on the impression okay. of the, the producer who he likes that he talks to or a friend of his, like his friend, you know, Jeff Lewis. Yeah, or, you know. yeah, yeah, so yeah. He takes on the impression of the person really? versus like making the decision necessarily for himself or like gotcha, if, gotcha. Obviously if there's an agenda there, he's going to be, you know, if, if yeah. him, he's going to love you, but I'm right, just, right. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I have a different, I see it. I see that yeah. side of him, but I have a different opinion. Um, well, so, he, all that matters is that he likes you for you. Yeah. I mean, That's, geez, you don't really have to on my burden. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a sweetheart and he's very nice to me and you know, we'll see. We'll I'd, love to, I'd love I'd love to be like somebody on his show again on his show with my new book. That would be fun. You know what I mean? So we'll see. I would like that for you. Yeah. I you know, I would love that. But I'm going to put it like into that. the universe. Yeah, I light my candle every day. As a matter of fact, it's burning downstairs, my lavender candle. Even and I put, Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. Friends, yeah. A Friends edition you could do. That I would, would love be it. awesome. Yeah, I would love that. You know, it's going to be, it's, it's tough for me to leave my animals. I get uh, crazy after one day, but for something like that, I would have made sure that they were very well taken care of. I'd have a couple of people come stay in my home, sure. but um, yeah, I think it would be fun to do. Yeah. You got to let, no, you, the animals would want you to do that. Yes, they would. <laughs> yes, um, they would. They would reap the benefits. Okay. One last thing. Yeah. Which is, um, I don't know. Have you noticed uh, Sutton has been, so allegedly, um, uh, Erica said that Sutton's been acting really fake on the show and she's been, uh, I don't know, she's been doing things that Erica doesn't approve of, who cares? But needless to say, Sutton uh, looks really skinny, like too skinny in the photos that have been coming out. And some of the, there were rumors a few seasons ago that she had a drinking problem. So a lot of the fans were wondering if that was why maybe she got so thin or was it that she just was already thin and went on semaglutide and is overdoing it? But I mean, when I say really thin, like it's not a joke, like it looks like a filter gone wrong. Well, I, I did not hear that, right? Because yeah. I'm not following, but I will be covering it. Now, here's mm. what I believed last year. Mm. A lot of people that I know that are drinkers yeah. are very thin, but they have that belly. And if you remember, she always had that little belly. Yes, so you believe it's true too. Could be. She always had that little belly. I do too. And that's what drinkers are very, very thin. Yeah. They have that little belly going on. So she was like, her legs were like like somebody's arms. Twigs. And twigs. And she was skinny, skinny. And then that little belly, which led me to believe that that rumor could be true. It could yeah. be true. And I do think so too, because I have friends that that do that and they live in Europe and they get like Yep, that little so skin thin, as a whale, like, but the belly. And I think that they don't to work do, out. They don't do, do much the liver, physical activity. Because right. when you drink, you just you get relaxed. So you yeah, don't but also it could have something to do with the kidney, the liver, yeah. to get that belt. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That doesn't go away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it could be because I always used to say that. She's so skinny, but she's got that little belly. And I'm not. Yeah, I'm not, no, you're not her. I'm not shaming at all. No, you're like, it looks like a health issue. But it, was yeah. a health, it looked like a health issue. Well, we'll That's see it. if anyone cares enough about Sutton to call it out. Or, yeah, call it out. Or to hide it. Oh. Both show affection, Ooh. right? Ooh. Behind the scenes, if you love someone, sometimes you call it out and sometimes yep. you hide we'll it. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> well, Dana, how long are we on? Because I know, we're done. We're but done. You, no, but you want to know something? This conversation was so fun and so fabulous. And I got to tell you something else. I make every morning, I get these cauliflower. They look like like pockets because yeah. I won't eat bread. I don't eat bread. So yeah. I put them in a toaster and I put like either tuna fish on a chicken salad. I don't eat breakfast food. 
I was so excited. I woke up, I made my thing, and I was so excited about what me and you were going to do that I was answering everybody. I turned around and looked. My dogs grabbed it right off the plate and <laughs> ate it. So I never even ate yet this I, morning. I'm, I'm starving. I listen, I it. love I so you. Much I love you too. I love you. I really appreciate I'm glad that we were able to connect. Uh, and I'm, I, I really appreciate this time with you and I want to do more if you allow it. So I'm going to allow it. I'm um, going to do it. And I want you to know that, um, I'm going to go eat too, finally. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You should eat. You have to eat. And I'll go ahead and tout your Patreon. Uh, by the way, you guys in the description of this video is Kim D's Patreon. If you want to sign up and show your support, she's going to be releasing her content on her Patreon for now as she gears up and learns the territory. Right, I'll, right. I'll be doing my best to cliff note her so she can Thank you. do it quickly. I'm talking to some of her producers, Julie, to help her too. She's a doll. She loves you already. And, uh, you know, we want to be supportive and help yes. other people uh, find their art and get it out. So that's Thank you. great. And, and it's and called Get Real with Kim D. Yep. And then follow Kim D where? How do I follow you, Kim? Um, I'm at Instagram, Kim D Posh. Instagram. I love my, I answer all my own social media. So if you DM me and you have a question, I'll answer it on Patreon. Okay. Or if it's something like serious and you need an answer right then and there, I'll answer you right then and there. But I'm looking for questions. A lot of people are asking me questions. I'll answer everything. If you don't like me, you could say whatever you want about me. It's fine. I'm also going to have uh, a fan on. I thought it would be once a month. That's a little difficult, but maybe once every six weeks, I'll have a fan on. Sure, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. And and there's ways to do multiple fans too. Right. You know, I suck at it, which is why I've never done it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but well, maybe I'm gonna do it. Maybe you'll figure out a way to do it and you could help me with that because I don't Absolutely. know. Absolutely. <laughs> maybe you could join our chat one time from my studio. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I go to the studio, Andrew handles all that. So we can get a fan, maybe one or two, maybe one of yours, one of mine, bring them all on and tell us everything. You know, what do you I, think? What do you think? I, I love would that. love it. I all think right, that's let's do fabulous. That. And I, by the way, it's good to share your opinion, good, you know, one way or another. Yes. I had someone write, um, they, you know, they write all nice things. And then someone wrote, I just don't, I, in the exit survey, and they wrote, I just don't like you. Well, yeah, one of them <laughs> said I to me. I love it. I laughed so hard. I was like, yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah, one of them said to me, just make sure you don't lie. I'll follow you and I'll, and I'll watch it, but make sure you don't lie. And I'm don't like, I don't, I don't lie. Someone even said on your thread, she lies. Listen to me. Please tell me one lie. I haven't made, I haven't lied. Not once. Tell no, me I, one if lie. anything, if anything, you've been told false gossip. Yes, and commented yes on it. but I do, do not lie. There's no yeah. reason. I know. I know most, yeah. There's no reason for me to lie. I'm not yeah, going to lie. And now that Kim D and I are talking, we can gossip together again. Yes. Which is what we used to do. We do help All each the other. All the time. And I'd All say, what do you think of this? Is this true, New Jersey? And she'd say, what do you think of that? And I'd yes. say, oh, I've heard this. And we used to do it. That's how Love we it. did it before David and uh, that mm -hmm. falling out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, all right, really quick. Uh, Morgan Rain, I've been influenced by Kim D to pursue my passions. Kim D made me do it. Laugh out loud. Kiss hug. That's another shirt for you, Kim. There you uh, go. Lucila Villagrana, you gals are so much fun to watch. Three hearts. Thank you, Lucila. Thank you. It's always nice to get positive Thank feedback. You. Um, let's see. Uh, um, there, oh my gosh, somebody said something about hoflation. That's hilarious. Um, I've never heard hoflation. <laughs> no, I, I don't even know what that means. No, I love it. It's like, I guess if you're a hoe and you go up in value, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Anne Marie, hi, you two lovelies. Heart, well done, Kim D, on ditching BTVR. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see what other ones we've got in here. Lots of people chatting and talking. I going through the list to make sure I don't miss any. Take uh, your time. Go through them. Take your time. Adaku, $20. Love you, Kim and Dana. Aww. You guys, thank you so much thank with the you. tips today. I noticed that you're really trying to bring it for us. I think, Kim, this is, uh, you don't have a lot of maybe experience with this, but uh, this is a really decent amount of tips for like, okay. we're definitely be, like B plus right now for tip levels, right? Thank you. Thank you, so, everyone. Yeah. So they're really trying to show like, let's hang out. 
Like oh, they're showing the support. That. Yeah, like they want us to do this again. I'm going I just, to do I'm it. telling you from my experience of doing lives with other people, right? Okay. Jared Langley, uh, 1999. Thank you, Jared. I love your hair. Wow, look at that hair. It's like a lot of hair there. That's amazing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's like Ramon. Amazing. Okay, Fat Boy Bubushka, super sticker, another one. Thank you. He he it, I, are you a boy? I wonder. I think it's a I think it's a girl. I think it's a girl, right? I think I'm it's a girl. He I don't yeah, know why does Fat Boy Babushka sound like a boy to me. <laughs> I know, but I yeah, I think it's a girl. It is a girl because the cat it's a girl. is a girl. Yeah, it's a girl. All right, let's see here. Who else we got? Um Okay, here's a, a Nancy Do. Wow. Hey, Kim D. Great seeing you on Dana's channel. I normally watch you with David, but love Dana. Oh, that's nice. Uh, thank you. Do. Thank you. Oh, Bunny Bunny. Thanks to both of us. And thanks to you, Bunny Bunny. I like your little mouses with the camera. Mm -hmm. And then uh, love you, Kim D. Will you be doing a podcast and give life advice? Because I just think you're yes. a very wise woman. Yes, I will. I, on my podcast, you can ask me any questions and I'll give you the advice. Absolutely. And uh, Fat Boy Babushka is not a man or a woman. It def identifies as a cat. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love that. That's awesome. Okay. okay. I, you know, when the heat comes on, I'm going to identify as a chair. Listen, um, it's what it is. We, we love everyone and everything. And I love, exactly. I love animals. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I love animals. It never so works for you. I even like you more now. Never ending runoff and the trolls of a desperate house. It could be. You never know, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have a great weekend. Okay, you guys. And on that note. Happy Labor Day, guys. Happy Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. Love Day. You. Bye. Bye, Dana. Dana, call, call me. Yeah, I'll call